Welcome back, everybody. Um, I found this Raptor 350 on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I've been going back and forth with this person for, I want to say, a month now. Um, it needs some work. Uh, the price is right. He's looking to get 1200 for it. I offered him 11 He said he'll take it. Um, he put a timing chain in it, and he says he can't get it back on top dead center, and he's done with it. So I'm going to go take a look at it and hopefully pick this thing up. Um, you guys are coming along for the ride. Is the top piece. Yeah, what do you think? I have no idea. <laughs> That's your car. I mean, the plastics are in good shape other than they're painted. They're not cracked or anything. No, the plastic's all good. The engine looks decent. What do I know? Is it your bike? Yeah, it was originally my dad's. He was telling me, told me to sell it. So. Nice. Did you paint it black? It came painted black. I, I buy these kits and sell them. This is, it seems like everyone loves to paint the plastic, and I think it looks like it kind of ruins it. Yeah, I know. I wish it, it was. was blue. I, I think it looks better blue. Uh, it takes forever to strip the paint off of it. But can be done. Yep. So what exactly did you do to it? Um, so my dad was telling me he was riding it and then he could hear the timing or something in there. So he stopped riding it. He put a bought a new chain, put it in it, and just has it has a touch it time. <laughs> You said you have the um the flywheel puller? Yeah, it's in the garage right here. Right about that. Yeah, it's in the You don't have the crash bar for the front? I think that's all the parts I have in there. I'll go grab that flywheel puller. What about the battery? It's in there, you want it? I don't know if it will take a charge. Yeah, I'll take it. Alright. Gives me an idea of which one you need to buy. Yeah, 
Did you control. get to ride it at all? I rode it like one time. Yeah. It's, it was pretty Pretty fun. powerful? Yeah. I have the 250. Oh. Yeah, I'm more into dirt bikes, not quads. You are? Yeah. He likes quads. There's a lot of good trails around here? Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. The, out back here is there's a bunch of trails. Oh, that's nice. Then, good access right from your house? Yeah. That's always nice. I have to pull it apart just to double check it. Yep. Make sure everything's protected. Not that I don't think you've got to do that. Yeah. Just for peace of mind. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> much yep all set yeah thank you appreciate it yeah, good luck. what's your uh, youtube channel rcb garage RB all right welcome back uh this is just giving the first look at this um raptor 350 that i just picked up um just giving it a walk around real quick uh, it's got some issues. Um, so the story behind this goes, uh, the guy, the guy I got it from said his dad put a time machine in it, said it was making noise. It didn't stop running or anything. He just wanted to replace the chain. Um, couldn't get it timed properly. So gave up on it and sold it. Um, a couple of the issues here is I didn't realize, should have looked it over a little better. Uh, it does have JB Weld on the case here. Uh, it doesn't seem to be leaking, but it looks like it threw a chain at one time and broke the case. That in itself isn't that big a deal as long as it doesn't continue to leak. Um, let's see if I can show you guys another little issue with this. So as I'm looking, it has a force extended rear end on it, which is uh, pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> This wheel here, as you can see, it's moving. The hub is loose. Um, you can see here that the nut is actually loose. So we'll tighten that up, get that done. Uh, this frame right here is broken. Get a little light on it for you, as you can see. They'll have to weld that up, fix that. Uh, the chain is pretty spent, it's missing o rings. Um, that's got to be replaced. The axle doesn't doesn't turn very well. I'm not really sure why. I'm hoping it's not the barons. I noticed that it didn't roll very well when I picked it up. It's got a it jams in certain spots. I don't know if that's a chain or not. I'll have to take the chain off and see. Uh, what I've done so far is just giving it a quick look over. I pulled that cover off. Um, I don't know that I'm going to take this magneto cover off or stata cover. Doesn't seem like it's leaking. There is oil in it. Um, I think I think we'll be fine. I'm hoping that when you put the timing chain on, he did everything right. Uh, the bike did come with the. Uh, flywheel puller, so I'm, I'm assuming he did it right. Um, I put it at top dead center. I timed it. This gear wasn't even tight. This bolt was loose. This gear wasn't even on the pin. Um, I found out it was a tooth off on timing, so I fixed that. Um, I took the chain tensioner out. I don't know if that's why he was having trouble timing it, because he didn't take the chain tensioner out. I'm not sure. I just hand cranked it around and it doesn't seem to be hitting anything. The valve seemed to be working fine. Um, I don't think we're going to have any bent valve issue. I'm hoping. 
Um, so I'm going to tighten, tighten this bolt up now. I'm going to put the chain tensioner back in. It's at top dead center. Um, I might try cranking it over and see if we have spark. And then uh, see what happens from there. So I'm going to do all that right now. And um, I'll turn you back on when I'm ready to... Uh, Give this thing a first first fire. All right, I put the battery back in it. Uh, this is the battery that came with the bike. Uh, he said it wouldn't hold a charge. I put it on a charger overnight, and it has 12 volts in it right now. Should be enough to to see if this will start. Uh, the timing is back on. Uh, I'll put the gas on reserve. There should be gas in the tank. Oh, there is gas in the tank. So if I put it on reserve. Should feed. Uh, I check for spark. It does. It does have spark. Um, the motor cranks over freely. So let's see if we can get this thing to fire up. Get much action here, so I think the next bet is to check compression. So I know I have spot and I know I have gas. So let me get let me get set up with the compression gauge and then I'll get right, turn you back on. I got the compression gauge set up. I'm gonna turn the motor I'm gonna turn it power on. I'm going to run it with wide open throttle. Let's see what we get. Uh, 100 psi and that's good enough to run and it'll probably go up higher if I crank it quicker. Let me put the battery charger on it. Let's see if we can't get a couple more cranking amps out of this thing. Uh, Alright, let's try that again. About 110 now, which is really good. I'll take that. Once we get it running, uh, the ring should seat, I would think, and give us a, uh, a little bit more compression, hopefully. So, we have compression. That's decent compression. So that tells me that the valve train's working. The timing's right. And all that stuff. So I'm assuming we got the carburetor issue here. So I don't have starting fluid. I do have some gas. So let me put the plug back in. So the compression is telling me the time is right. I got the time right. All we got to do is just get the... Uh, I'm just going to snug everything up right now because I need to change. I need to put the plug in and all that. See if I can squirt a little fuel. 
inside that uh, vibrator. See if we can't get this. inside the box. Yeah, one of those uh got a little fuel in there. Let's see if we see if we can get this guy sputtered. Alright. Give it a little bit of choke. She runs. That carburetor is going to need a clean. Um, so we got a lot of work to do to this thing. But uh, I'm happy with that. Pretty good score. Should be able to get this thing running in no time. Um, all right. So let me let me stop here and uh, put together a game plan on what I want to do moving forward on this next. A few days later, uh, I finally got the thing up into this, onto the lift. I've had a lot of other projects in front of it. Um, I had to finish my 400EX, which is right here. That's all set. Um, I've had some snow blowers in here. I had to fix my dad's snow blower. I had a buddy of mine, and one of his gone through. So I've been kind of busy with that. Uh, it's been about a week since I got this to pop off. I'm just going to walk around right now and go over a few of the things that I noticed while it's sitting up here. So the first thing I'm going to address here is the chain. And you guys can see here that that chain has got a massive amount of kinks in it. And I think that's the reason why the axle's not spinning too well. It's because this chain's binding up. Um, at certain points of it, you can see the O-ring is actually deteriorated. Say like right there, you can see that O-ring. This chain's junk. I need to get a new one. Um, Let's see, next thing I need to get is I need to replace this chain guide. It snapped off, so I need to pick up another one of those. The lower roller down here, I don't know if you can see. Uh, the chain's laying on it right now. It's all, the barons are gone in it. So I was thinking about buying a new one of those, but I think I can just swap the top to the bottom. Um, very rarely the chain hits the top guide, top roller I should say. Um, unless you max out the suspension, it's the only way it's going to hit that. So if I swap them and put the sloppy barren one up top, I think we'll be in good shape. And we'll get out of having a good place for that. The case has some JB Weld on it. It must have threw a chain and did some damage in here. Um, shame on me for not spotting that when I was looking at this bike. I did look at the cover hanging off of there, but I didn't. And I noticed that the case had a piece missing out of it, but I didn't see the JB Weld. Is it a deal breaker? Probably not. I would have still bought this bike because I didn't see any other red flags at all. And um, that being the only red flag, and it's actually not leaking or anything, not that big a deal. What it does do to me is it keeps me from asking full retail for this when I have it completely done. Um, that's probably, that crack there is going to be between a $250 and a $500 difference between full retail and what I'm going to end up selling this for. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, the next thing, I need a cob kit, and you can see here that this is supposed to be bolted to the bottom of the bowl. It's not. It's all loose, so that tells me somebody's been in this carburetor before, and uh, I'm going to be in it again. I'm going to rebuild it anyway, just to, just, just so it'll run primo. Uh, what else does this thing need? The four bolts in here are all missing, so I need to I need to ride those and replace those. Uh, I don't know if you can see up in here. Might be easier if I get around the other side. Another thing I noticed just looking around here is uh, if you look up here, you can see that that top motor mount's missing. The bolts are in there and everything, but it's missing. So I need to address that figure out where that is and what's going on with that. I got a box of pots that came with the bike. I'm going to go through that in a minute 
and take a look and see if maybe by any chance they're in there. It needs a battery. The battery, as advertised, doesn't hold the charge. I can get a charge in it and it's good enough to crank over, but it's weak and then I'll let it sit for a day and it's completely dead. I need an oil filter and an air filter. And I need to address these plastics. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. In the past, this is like the third or fourth bike that I've purchased that somebody painted. As you can see, it used to be blue. It's a lot of work to strip the paint off and then, and then uh, recondition the plastic with a heat gun and, and wet sanding it and all that. That's a lot of work. They sell wrap kits for these, vinyl wrap, and they look pretty good online. They're a bit pricey. I think they're like 150 bucks for a kit. I'm thinking that I might try to wrap this bike and see how that comes out, but that, that, that'll be in a future date. Um, so that's all I see for having to buy actual pots for this. I mean, it's missing nuts and bolts everywhere, but I have buckets of metric nuts and bolts from working on these things for over the years. So I'm sure I can come up with everything that I need that's missing out of my uh, nuts and bolts storage, hardware storage, whatever you want to call it. So this is the stuff that came with the bike. Not this, this is the starter to my dad's snowblower. Let me move that. This is the stuff that came with the bike. Uh, this is the console or dashboard or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, I'm glad that that's here so I can put that back in. That was painted as well. And even shows you which, which side the lights go on, neutral and reverse. Pretty cool. Um, so that's there. That's good. I have no idea what this is. I don't know if it goes to this bike or not. I'm going to have to do some research and figure it out. This looks to me like it's the rubber, the rubber piece that goes underneath the gas tank. Um, keeps the top of the motor dry. I'll have to put that back in. Here's the air filter. There's a bit of dry rod on it. Um, I could probably still reuse this, but it's kind of kind of dusty. We'll take a look at it. Maybe I can reuse it. We'll see. Here's the cover. There wasn't any bolts. Um, there was a couple of loose bolts inside the bucket. They're not going to get too long for that. It came with the flywheel puller, which is nice. I have that. There's an on-off switch, doesn't go to this spike, I don't know what it goes to, but I actually could, I have a use for that. My lawnmower needs a new on-off switch, so maybe I can retrofit that. This carburetor right here came in the box, it does not go to this bike. This, I know from previous, exper previous experiences is that this is a Honda carburetor, and it looks like it's either an... XR80 or an XR100. I'm thinking this is an XR100 carburetor. I'll hang on to that. You could actually, these are, these are actually nice. You could put these on a lot of different things. Um, you could even put these on like lawnmower engines. These are really nice carbs. I'll hang on to it. Um, it looks like these are the top motor mounts, but the bolt isn't here. So I'll have to come up with a bolt. Luckily, the motor mounts are here anyway. Um, there's a chain roller. The barons seem good know what that came from I'll hang on to it and it looks like at one point they replaced the rear caliper on this um, here's the pocket brake obviously it's all it's all sorry camera died uh, I'll just finish up real quick and show you guys what's going on the exhaust isn't connected um, this right here broken I need to weld it what else? Uh, the Nerf bars. This is an interesting thing right here. Let me, uh, let me get a flashlight so you can see. So these Nerf bars. So I'm looking at them, and as you can see, they're pretty loose. They're zip tied in the front. There's only one bolt holding them in the back, and it's like that on both sides. And they're upside down. As you guys, anyone who's familiar with Nerf bars knows that these are upside down. You can see that those hanging low like that are not a good thing. Um, I'll show you what these are supposed to look like for reference. This is what they're supposed to look like. And for actually, for a better example, this is a, uh, a Raptor 250. And you can see how those Nerf bars are. So, 
I gotta f address that somehow. Um, I don't. These are not for this bike, but I think I can clean them up, make them look good, and with a little bit of fabrication, I can make them work. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I think that's it for part one of this Raptor 350. Um, this is going to be a multiple pot series, sort of like my EX400. There's just too much work to do to this to get it done in one video. I want to take my time and do it right. And if you guys, if this is something that you guys want to watch, subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I post another video about this. It's going to be a fun project. I can't wait to get in it. And thanks for watching. Subscribe, thumbs up, bell notification. And I'll see you in part two of this video.